Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to uh, solve steady navier Stokes equations using Phoenix. So I will be presenting a very simple uh, navier Stokes solver. That's the simplest you can implement in Phoenix. And it, from my experience, works pretty well, especially in 2D uh, problems. But if you have complex 3D uh, problems, then a more robust navier Stokes solver might be needed, which I will talk about later in this tutorial series. Okay, so let's consider the Navier-Stokes equations. So we're interested in solving the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations uh, using the finite element uh, formulation. So this is a code that I have uh, uploaded. So first, so I'm gonna walk you through this code and talk about uh, its features. Uh, so on the top of the code, we're setting the viscosity, uh, then the density, I'm specifying the mesh, uh, the path to the mesh that I have. And then I have a specific target velocity at the inlet that I'd like to simulate for my inlet boundary condition. So this sets my Reynolds number. Now, uh, the, the, you have two options for solving steady Navier-Stokes equations. The first option is that you treat the equations as an unsteady equation. You use your same unsteady solver, but just having a fixed boundary condition and you run it until basically things don't change anymore. So, you know, you reach certain tolerance. So the, the two time steps after each other are basically identical. Now, the advantage for this approach is that you don't need a new code. You can use your same transient solver. And also uh, it sometimes tends to be more robust, converges better. And also you can treat your nonlinear a term, the, the advection term, the nonlinear advection term in our source equations in an explicit fashion. So you have the option to do so when you do it in an unsteady solve. And by doing so, you don't need any nonlinear like Newton solvers. That makes it a little bit simpler. But then, uh, the, uh, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve it directly. So not treating it as an unsteady equation, but ignoring the unsteady term and directly solving it at, as one shot. So now the, the advantage of this is that, of course, it's just one shot, so it's probably gonna be faster, but then the challenge is that you have to deal with the nonlinearity. So, and that makes that means that you have to use the Newton solver, which is um, a little bit more difficult to converge. So I'm gonna show you a, a trick to overcome that. So basically what we do here, we have a certain target velocity. So assume that the target velocity is large, so you have a high Reynolds number. So what happens is that you might take a steady number of solver and your Newton solver will not converge. So you will not get a solution. So now the way to overcome that is that you break it down into multiple problems. So here I'm starting from using this array of inlet u, I'm starting from a small inlet velocity of 0.1 and I'm slowly ramping it up to my target velocity. So in this case, I'm doing it in five cases. So, so in this way, every time you do a new solve, you're using the last solution you found as an initial guess for the Newton's solver. And that makes Newton's solver, which is very sensitive to initialization, to converge. So this is how you can you know, make this work. So then, uh, so here I'm uh, setting the file, the output velocity file, I'm defining the file, I'm loading the mesh in this command, I'm setting the basis order. So I'm using quadratic shape functions for velocity. I'm defining my function spaces. So this is my vector element function space. So this is for velocity, quadratic, for pressure, it's a scalar and it's first order. And I define my mixed element function space. Then I'm defining my inflow and outflow and walls. In this problem, my mesh is a blocked artery. So this is the mesh that I'm trying to solve. Okay, so it's a blocked artery. Uh, and uh, so the flow is going from left to right. And you know you have two options to define your boundary conditions in Phoenix. You could either tag them you know, a, a bit another code, which I'll talk about later in these tutorials. But for now, in this case, it's pretty simple because I know the the a coordinate. So if I put the data axis on, it's kind of easy for me to set the boundaries. And this is how I do it here. I define the inflow to be on boundary and also at x equals zero, the outflow to be on boundary at x equals two. And at the walls, what I'm doing to define my no slip walls, I'm defining anything that's on boundary and not either an inflow or outflow. 
that way I'll easily pick up the manual sleep one. So then I go on to define my inlet flow. I'm, so I'm using an expression. So here I'm defining a parabolic velocity profile. So U is the parameter here. I'm initializing it to 0.5, but later I'll update this value. And then I'm defining my test functions and different functions. Um, uh, the, the function to save my solution, I split it into two parts, U and P, because the space W, if I go back to space W, you can see it's a, a, a mixed function space that has contains both this vector element and also this scalar element spaces. Okay, so then I define my boundary conditions. So I have my inlet, which is uh, my inflow. So here I'm using W sub zero. So sub zero was the first component of my space. That's velocity. And here I'm you know, not going a step forward to do sub zero, sub one. I'm defining it as a vector. So you can see this inlet flow expression is a vector where this is the X component and my Y component is zero. So for the walls, I just use a constant zero, zero. And for the outlet, I use sub one so that goes to pressure and it's a constant pressure equals zero. So I group my traditional boundary conditions into BC and then I go on to define my weak form. So this is my weak form. So I'm gonna very briefly explain this weak form, how it's derived. So we take the Navier-Stokes equations, the momentum equation and multiply it by V. So this is V and that's the test function corresponding to velocity. And for the conservation of mass, my continuity equation, I multiply it by Q, which is the test function corresponding to pressure. So V is a vector similar to velocity and, and Q, my uh, pressure, my scalar test function is a scalar. So now what I do is that when I multiply by V, so this is my advection term. So I have U, so I have a dot product of U. So nabla grad is how you define gradient in Phoenix. So that's grad U. So dot product of U and grad U, okay? And then I also have dot product of that with V. Okay, because so I'm multiplying the equation by V. So that takes care of my advection term. And then for my uh, diffusion term, so I have mu times Laplace of U, and then I multiply it by V. So then I do integration by parts. So that reduces the second derivative to a first derivative. And I get the inner product of grad U and grad V. Okay, so that's from integration by parts. And then I have the pressure term, so grad P, which is multiplied by V. And I also do an integration by parts on this, which I get divergence of V times P. So essentially I take the gradient from pressure, give it to V, the test function that it's multiplied by. And then finally, I have my continuity equation, which is multiplied by Q. And I just add that to my weak form. And you can add these two into as one equation because the test functions V, that's multiplied by momentum equation and Q multiplied to the uh, continuity equation, they're arbitrary. So you can add them into a single weak form equation. And then you define your trial function. So here you're using a Newton derivative. So you need the Jacobian. So here's how you define the derivative. Okay. And then you formulate your nonlinear variational problem. F is the weak form. W is a function that you're saving your solution to. BC is your Jewish the boundary condition and df is your Jacobian, which you get from this derivative command. Uh, and then you can define your solver. And if you like, you can set the linear solver, you can set the tolerance for the neutron situation and all those great things here, uh, which we're not going to talk about that here. So then I, I enter this loop and I, I need a loop because remember, I'm not really solving it as one shot because the real solver might be large and my neutron a solver might fail. So what I do is that I start ramping it up using this inlet URA. So I loop over this number of stimulations, I read the inlet URA, and then I uh, update my inlet flow dot U. So inlet flow is this expression and it has a parameter U. So I use inlet flow dot U and I update that. So this expression gets updated and so does the uh, boundary. And then I solve it. Then I you know, split the, the, the uh, solution to U and P and I save, in this case, I'm only saving the velocity, okay, in my uh, XDMF file. And I, you know, keep doing that, okay? So in this, so you could save all the iterations, but here I'm only saving the last iteration. So with this if command, I'm only saving the last one because that's the one I care about. I'm only doing the previous lower Reynolds number 
cases to kind of ramp up the inner profile slowly to help neutral convert. Okay. So um, this is the solution that you get. So if I load it in pair view, this is uh, the velocity profile you get. You have a parabolic profile at the inlet, flow going from left to right. You have this blockage, velocity increases. And you can, if you do, so this is the magnitude, you can also visualize the Y component of velocity. And if you like, you can do surface LIC to visualize the streamline. So here you can see the recirculation zones uh, downstream of this blocked arch. 